Amen, amen. Well, I'm so glad that you are here today for our worship, a time to celebrate what God is doing. And Parker Campus, we are so glad that you are joining us today as well. We pray that you will continue to experience the powerful uh, presence of the Holy Spirit in your worship and during the message. And we're so grateful for the work that Pastor Ruben and Jared are doing there among you and all the volunteers. So thank you for serving. And, and also I've been told that there is there are some uh, United States Navy uh, folks watching aboard the USS Carl Vinson. And they are, uh, yes. And they're following our Transform series. They're working through their workbook. And so, hey, we're grateful that you guys are tuning in wherever you are. Uh, we're grateful that you're tuning in and you're a part of this. And we pray that God will continue to transform you and that you would bring transformation to, that, uh, uh, to the ship that you are on, to the carrier that you're on. So if you have your Bible or Bible app, you can go ahead and turn to Mark chapter 12, verses 29 through 30. And if you do not have a Bible with you, feel free to use one of the Bibles located underneath the seats in front of you and turn to page 1009. Parker Campus, you're invited to jump up right there in Alumni Hall, run to the table in the back, pick up one of those Bibles and return to your seat quickly. So uh, as always, if you don't have a Bible that you can read or understand easily, please take one of these Bibles home with you. They don't do any good sitting underneath these seats all week long. Take it home with you, read it, and begin to apply it to your life. Here's what we are convinced of at Calvary. If we read God's word and we apply God's word, he will do his part and change our lives. And we love life change here at Calvary. We are in the middle of our transformation series. And so far we have been letting God transform our lives spiritually. We've been inviting God to transform our lives physically. We've been inviting God to transform our lives mentally. And today we're going to tackle one of the most difficult topics for men, our emotional health. Uh, how to deal with how you feel. I just made, ladies, you don't know this, I just made every man uncomfortable in this room. I promise you will not be expected to hug somebody at the close of the service. Uh, now humans, we experience four basic emotions. All of our emotions are kind of rooted in these four basic emotions. They are sadness, happiness, fear and anger. And for most men, the reason why their wives often ask them, how are you feeling? Is because most of the time our faces remain unchanged. Uh, if you want to see my happy face, here it is. <laughs> if you want to see my sad face, this is it. If you want to see my angry face, it's this. And if you want to see my whatever face, here it is. I, my face remains unchanged most of the time. Raise your hand if you've ever been told that you are a difficult person to read. Anybody? Yeah, I hear it all the time that I'm a difficult person to read. Now you're gonna notice that in your life notes, there is a blank space at the top of your life notes. Here's what I wanna ask you to do. I want you to reflect for just a few minutes on the emotion that you felt, the main emotion that you felt this past week. What was the main emotion that you felt, that you experienced, or maybe one of the ones that really stick out in your minds? I want you to write that down on that space. Now take your time, now hurry up. <laughs> Go ahead and do it, write it down. It's hard, isn't it? Some people say, no, I'm great. Some of you are in tune with your emotions. You don't need this message. When Jesus gave the greatest commandment to his followers, he told them it involved emotion. Jesus said in Matthew 12, 30, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Jesus is saying, I don't want you to just kinda love God. I don't want you to just sorta love God. 
I want you to be so devoted to him that you love him with all of your heart, all of your soul, all of your mind, all of your strength, everything that you are. He wants you to pour your heart out to him. And that requires us to have an emotional relationship with the one who created us. He wants you to desire him. He wants you to find your confidence in him. He wants you, the core of who, uh, what makes you, you. He wants you to love him with all of your being. It's not just an intellectual love. It is an emotional love. So let's understand a couple things about our emotions first. First, emotions are a gift from God that demonstrates his image. Emotions are a gift from God that demonstrate his image. Genesis 126, beginning of the Bible, beginning of creation, God created and he said, let us make human beings in our image to be like ourselves. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit made you and I in his image. And each and every emotion that you have and that we've experienced comes from God and they are a gift from God. And the last time I checked, gifts are good things to receive. Now, some of us might say, well, some emotions are bad, yes, Some of the emotions are negative, right? We have some positive emotions like joy and hope, inspiration, love, but others are negative emotions like anger and bitterness, resentment and loneliness. Yet all those emotions came from God because God has them all. And God is the only being capable of demonstrating perfect emotions. He can demonstrate all of those emotions perfectly into a T. But because sin entered the world, uh, Adam and Eve, we're all sinners and every aspect of our lives has been impacted by sin, even our emotions. If sin impacts our thoughts and our thoughts can be wrong, then sin has certainly impacted our emotions and our emotions can be wrong. We can have wrong feelings. The Disney advice that to follow our heart is terrible advice, right? Here's some advice for you. Instead of seeking to follow your heart, understand that our feelings are often unreliable. So we must seek to manage them to please God and to succeed in life. Our feelings are often unreliable. So you and I have the responsibility to seek to manage them, to please God and succeed in life. Our emotions can lead us in the wrong direction. Proverbs 14, 12 says, there is a path before each person that seems right, but it ends in death. You ever had a gut feeling that was absolutely dead wrong? You ever experienced an emotion or a feeling? You're like, I just know there's something fishy. I just know there's something wrong with this. And you were completely wrong. Uh, Our gut feelings, sometimes they seem right. they, They feel right. But if we obey that feeling and we act out our actions, we're often led in a wrong direction for our lives. I didn't ask Pastor Chad to share this, but I'm going to share this. Pastor Chad, forgive me. We were in a fantasy football league this year and Pastor Chad and I were neck and neck with number one and number two. And it got towards the end of the season and we were lined up to play each other and Chad dropped all of his starting players and put in new guys. And I whooped them and it was fun. (laughs) And later uh, when we were talking about it, humbly Chad said, every one of my hunches were wrong. Like all the hunches that he had, those, that emotion, that feeling, I, I just feel like something, it was all wrong because if they were right, he would have won, but I ended up winning the whole season. So here's another example. Imagine that you are working with your coworkers and you notice that your coworkers are whispering and you begin to think, well, they're whispering about me. 
they're talking about me behind my back and they seem to be excluding you. You walk into a room, they stop talking. They go out in the hall. So you quit your job. And it turns out they were planning a party to celebrate your five years of employment, right? Our feelings, that didn't happen to me. I don't know if it happened to you. But it turns out, right, our, our feelings, we can't depend on them. Our feelings are unreliable. Sometimes the things we feel about ourselves, sometimes the things that we feel about our spouses, sometimes the things we feel about our family and our children are dead wrong. And if we allow ourselves to be led consistently by our emotions, it's impossible for God to be the Lord of our lives. It's impossible for us to allow the Spirit of God to lead us if we're allowing our emotions to consistently lead us and dictate the decisions that we make. Now, the Bible says this in Romans 8, 8, those who are still under the control of their sinful nature can never please God. And if our emotions dominate our lives, we will never be able to please God. I wonder how often I have allowed my emotions, my gut feelings, the thoughts that I think, I wonder how often I've allowed my feelings to control my decisions. I wonder how often I'm making decisions based on the leadership of the Holy Spirit rather than the leadership of my emotions. How about you? Have you ever thought about that? Are you really letting the Spirit of God direct the decisions that you make? Or are you depending on your emotions? So if we want to experience success in life, we have got to learn to manage our emotions because people who don't manage their emotions damage themselves, they damage their families, they damage their future, they damage their reputations, they damage their character. When people are solely led by their emotions, it's dangerous, it's hard, it's difficult. They can't control their temper. They, they can't control their feelings of lust. They can't control the feeling of loneliness that they feel. When you become or when you became a follower of Jesus, when you came to a point where you believed that God created you and wanted a relationship with you, but that you sinned and you turned your back on him and you understood that there was a penalty for your sin and you understood also that Jesus died on the cross to pay the penalty for your sin so that you could have a right relationship with him and then you surrendered your lives over to God and received Christ as your savior, you made him Lord of your life. And that means he's also Lord of our emotions. He's Lord over our emotions. You gave him your emotions when you gave him your heart. You gave him your emotions when you gave him your life. You gave him your emotions when you surrendered your life over to Jesus and said, everything I am is now yours. Jesus wants to be Lord of our lives. He wants to be Lord of how you feel, not just your decisions, uh, not just your thoughts, uh, not just your spiritual life. Jesus wants to be Lord of your emotions as well. Now, if you want to become a follower of Jesus, if today you said, you know what? I'm ready to surrender my life to Jesus. I understand those things that Pastor Joe just said, and I wanna surrender my life. Our prayer team is gonna be here at the close of the last song, and they would love to celebrate life change with you as you give your life over to Jesus. Now, the Bible encourages believers in 1 Peter 4, 2, to no longer live the rest of our lives controlled by human desires. Uh, that's our emotions. Rather, we are to live our lives controlled by God's will. Peter wasn't writing that passage of scripture to the people who had not yet come to Christ. He was writing that passage of scripture to believers. And he said, look, no longer live the rest of your life controlled by human desires. You know why we, we're, we're guilty of that often? because we love to go with how we feel. We feel like we're always right. We feel like our emotions are right. 
God wants followers of Jesus to make decisions uh, controlled by God's will, not by how we feel. How we feel leads us down dark roads. When we make decisions based on how we feel, we can destroy our whole family. So how do we manage our emo emotions? How do we deal with how we feel? I'm gonna give you three things in this last point that you can do. Three things. We name it, reframe it, and tame it. We name it, reframe it, and tame it. The very first thing that we have to do when managing our emotions is to figure out how we feel. We have to figure out what it is. So I wanna ask you a minute ago, I asked you to write down your emotion that you felt this past week. So I'm gonna ask you to shout it out on the count of three. If you're watching us online, what I want you to do is I want you to type in the comment section, your emotion, the main emotion that you felt this past week, all right? So no one's gonna hear you, but we're all gonna hear everybody together, okay? So don't be embarrassed. Whatever your emotion is, we're gonna shout it out. One, two, three. All right. Tired and hungry are not emotions. <laughs> not even hangry is an emotion. Okay, you don't get to use that. Now, I want to admit and confess something to you. I admit and confess that I am often confused about my emotions. I often don't know what I'm feeling. I could be having a conversation with my wife and she would say, well, how do you feel about that? I don't know. I don't know, I don't know, I guess I'm okay. Well, okay is not a feeling either, right? We have to figure out what we feel so that when we figure out what we feel, if we can name what we feel, we're better off managing it. Any of you ever felt like you don't know what you feel? Raise your hand. If you don't know what you feel, right? A lot of us are like that. If we want to manage our emotions, we have to learn to name it. And if we can't name it, we can't tame it. Now, I mentioned the four base emotions, sadness, anger, whatever else the other two were. Now, some people say that there are four base emotions, other people say there's about seven emotions altogether. Some people say there are about eight emotions. Some psychiatrists say that there are over 400 emotions. How on earth are we going to be able to identify all those emotions? But they're all rooted in those base four emotions, right? Fear, sadness, happiness, and whatever the other one is, right? <laughs> Anger, thank you. Fear, anger, sadness, and happiness. All the rest of the emotions are rooted in those, but they're not always the same. For instance, feeling anxious is not always rooted in fear. Being anxious about whether or not your, your girlfriend will say yes to you, you're in love with her, you're a little nervous, you're anxious, you're hopeful. Well, that feeling of anxiousness is rooted in, in love. It's rooted in hope. It's, it's rooted in expectation, right? It's, it's rooted in happiness. But the same feeling or that same word for anxiousness doesn't quite describe it when you're outside and you're walking through a shadowy place in a park or outside and you're feeling anxious about what you see in the dark shadows. See, it's, they're different emotions. And so out of all the things that we experience, they're all rooted in these very four. Uh, one is rooted in happiness, the other is rooted in fear. Our emotions are very, very complex. So husbands, please pay attention to what I'm about to say. If your wife is pestering you about what you are feeling, take a deep sigh, scratch your chin, lean forward and tell her you are feeling very deep and complex feelings. And they're rooted in happiness and you don't understand what happens, but you feel it most whenever you look into her eyes. Okay? That's a pass. Wives, just forget what you just heard. 
if you are able to name your emotion and if you determine that that emotion that you feel could cause damage, that's when you need to reframe it. You need to ask yourself, what is the real reason I'm feeling this right now? Suppose you go to a restaurant and the service is painfully slow and you wait and you wait and you wait to get your order in, you wait for your food, and meanwhile, another group comes in, and they get their order in, and their food comes out before your food does. Raise your hand if you've ever been there. When it happens, you feel an emotion right? You feel this emotion kind of welling up inside you. You're, you're, maybe you're angry, maybe you're irritated. What you have to do is reframe it by asking, what is the real reason I'm feeling so angry? Now, naturally, right, you are a little bit frustrated over the service. The service is slow, but some of the anger you're feeling toward the service has nothing to do with the server. The truth is, the whole reason why you went to the restaurant in the first place is it was time to eat. You were hungry, right? You're ready to eat. You're ready to digest food. And the real reason you're feeling angry is because you're hungry or hangry, right? The emotion that you're feeling doesn't have as much to do with the slow service as it does with the fact that you're hungry. So does expressing your anger to your server get your way? Is it helpful to express your anger to the server? No, what happens typically if you get angry with your server? You get worse service, right? Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Would you like this water cleaned up off your lap? So what do you do if you reframe it? If you ask the question, is this emotion a damaging emotion? You reframe it, you come to realize it's not, then you tame it. Now, some emotions are so destructive, so damaging, so hurtful, so non-effective that the only thing that you can do with those emotions are to tame them. Philippians 2, 5, we are encouraged as followers of Jesus to have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Attitude is not just a mental, attitude is also emotional. Your attitude includes your emotions. What you are feeling should be the same thing as Jesus feels. So ask yourself, what would Jesus feel in this situation? How would Jesus feel? Would Jesus be irritated with my server? No. Would Jesus be yelling at the cooks? No. And since we are followers of Jesus, we must instantly dismiss any feeling that does not make us more like Jesus. That's what we must do. We must immediately dismiss any feeling that doesn't make us more like Christ. So if I'm feeling this emotion, I've identified it. Would Jesus have this emotion? No, then that's not the way I should be responding right then. If I'm able to ask myself the question, is this a feeling that Jesus would have? And would Jesus react the way that I want to react? If that answer is no, then we tame it. Now, sometimes we tame it by just simply redirecting what we're feeling and we use it for good. If you're a, a victim of injustice, maybe you become an attorney and you fight for the little people, right? You use that anger that you felt to do something good with your life. Or suppose a husband and wife, they're grieving over the fact that they can't have children. My wife and I have been there for six years. We struggle, but, but suppose this husband and wife were struggling and, and, and maybe the wife conceives and then they have a miscarriage and they have all this love that they had developed for that unborn baby that died in the womb, how do they manage that? How do they tame that emotion? Well, let's say they just simply redirect it. Let's say they continue to try and continue to try and they can't have children. There are 153, 153 million orphans around the world that are waiting for a mom, waiting for a dad. And those parents can redirect what they're feeling, that sadness or that sorrow or that guilt, and sometimes even shame. They can redirect it 
and to fostering children and adopting children and getting involved with things like compassion. It's a great, great way to redirect that desire that you have to hold a baby in your arms. Your greatest ministry that you would ever experience on this planet could actually be birthed from some deep pain that you feel in your life if you redirect it. If you say, okay, I don't like how I'm feeling. How can I use this to do something good? Something that will benefit the world, something that could benefit me, but something that would advance God's kingdom. What can I do with this emotion, with this pain, with this hurt? And finally, let me throw out a plug for Celebrate Recovery. Some of the emotions that we feel are actually caused by triggers those triggers are things that happened to us uh, when we were a child or happened to us in the past. It doesn't necessarily have to be when we were a kid, but maybe you experienced trauma of some form or maybe your parents were constantly uh, uh, criticizing you or, or maybe it was a friend or a teacher or maybe it was uh, an abusive relationship that you had and they constantly put you down or they constantly said words and then somebody close to you today says something similar and it just creates a trigger moment for you. All those emotions of what you felt in the past come surging back and you take them out on your spouse when they were just playing around, when they didn't really mean those same things that you heard. And I certainly can't, and I'm certainly not able to explain everything about triggers, but I do want to encourage you, if you have a hang up from your past, a hurt from your past, Sign up or not sign up, just come to Celebrate Recovery on Monday nights here in this room at 6.30. They would love to pray for you, to encourage you and to help you recover from some of those triggers in your past. See, we cannot change our emotions on our own. We need one another and we need the power of the Holy Spirit to change our emotions. We need God to work. That's why our theme verse for this series is Romans 12 2. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. See, we are completely dependent upon God to bring about the change that you and I are incapable of bringing in our lives. We must ask God, God, would you transform my emotions? And would you be willing to open up your heart and mind and invite God to do just that? Because if we invite God to transform our, thought, our emotions, if we invite God to transform our emotions, help us to name it and reframe it and tame it, God will do his part because God is a faithful God that wants you to become more like Jesus. So he's going to do all he can to help you become a closer follower of Jesus Christ. God will do his part. And if we can change the way we think, we can change our emotions. And if we change our emotions, then we can tame them. And then as we tame them, we can quite possibly transform the world that is right around us. Let's pray together. Father, thank you. Thank you for grace and thank you for mercy and thank you for creating emotions within us. Lord, it is our prayer and our desire that you would be glorified in our emotions. Help us not to be led by our desires, but to be led by the Spirit of God. And Father, I pray for those who are struggling, who are hurting, those who have struggles from a past that damaged them. God, I pray for healing for them. And I pray also for an awareness for them that they would understand that sometimes we carry emotional baggage into our future. And you don't want us to do that. So help them to let go of that baggage, let go of that hurt and be able to walk confidently with you. Father, continue to show up, change us into the men and women that you've called us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. All God's people said, amen. amen.